Some of the minis right here are the same minis which I painted when I started with Warhammer. And today, I'm gonna strip them. And if you're asking why would I destroy my relics from the past, it's because I wanna make an epic grimdark diorama. In frame. And these minis are sufficiently old to make that bleak, gloomy vibe just perfect. Let's begin! The miniatures are stripped and most of them have been removed from their bases and also most of the material that we're gonna use is in here. So we got all sorts of debris like these bricks for example, then some general debris from walls as well as some metal rusty scrap and I can always add some more material later but that's not the real problem at hand. I have to decide which filler to use for all the miniatures to stand on, so I can either use Milliput or a construction foam. You see, Milliput is durable, but heavy, and also not exactly pleasant to work with. Construction foam, on the other hand, is light, but I don't know if it can support minis from metal. But either way, before doing that, I can just try the positions with... Bluetech. Okay, so I think that I am fairly satisfied with this setup. I might shuffle some things around so they are nice and cozy in there, like sardines in a can, but for the most part this is pretty good. I mean, obviously I can't fit everyone in there because it's too small, but I mainly want to include Grimaldus and his retinue together with the champion, and the rest is secondary. But now, let's answer the question. Which filler do I use? Construction foam or millipod? Well, I do want to get the benefits of the light weight of the foam, but I also want the sturdiness of Millipod. So after some heavy thinking, the answer is both. And how do I do that? Well, let's see. Before moving on, a quick word from our sponsor. Do you have too much empty space on your walls like this? And do you want to showcase your love for Warhammer? Well. I do, and you can do that as well with today's sponsor, Displate. Displate offers unique metal posters with all kinds of themes, like Star Wars, Marvel, and of course, Warhammer. And these aren't just any posters, they are metal, they are sturdy, and they are mounted with a magnet. Also, it takes like 20 seconds to mount them. I'm not even kidding, look! You just wipe your wall with a cleaning wipe, stick a protective leaf, then magnet, and finally, the display. It's that easy. But you know the best part? This Black Friday, Displate offers absolutely massive discounts. And the more you get, the higher the discount. So use my link in the description or my code and it'll be automatically applied at the checkout. Thank you Displate for sponsoring this video and if you guys like the posters, check them out. So I tore apart my initial setup, and as you'll see later, it won't look anything like this, really. But let's face the problem at hand. I realized that the surface layer might peel off once I built the ground for the minis. So guess what? I did it myself. And this chipboard layer underneath, though, will have much better grip. The bulk of the terrain volume will be indeed from the foam. I cut out a piece and stuck it to the frame. Simple as that. Well, actually, I did have to adjust the thickness, but look how easy it is. To stick it in there, I used two types of glue. Some equivalent to PVA glue and a super glue. I also glued on another layer for the main hero to stand on. 
but at that point I was like, what if I made two rows instead of one? Initially I thought there is gonna be just one line of characters, but if this works out, it's gonna be even better. So I have to try the positions again and adjust the foam accordingly. And ultimately I got something that I can work with. So I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that we have the foundation and we can lay down the millipod on top. And uh, yeah, I, I know it looks fucking weird right now, okay? The bad news is that I'll have to do that twice. And that'll be pretty obvious once I attach some of the minis, but first. I realized that there are some mold lines, so I gotta remove them real quick. These guys could be considered my first or second Warhammer army, so given the fact I didn't use any lamp back then, it's no wonder there are so many mold lines and undrilled barrels. Even though I will use glue to attach the minis, with Milliput you might not even need it. I haven't really mentioned it yet, but Milliput is a two-part epoxy putty which can be used for sculpting, filling gaps and similar tasks. For mixing it's a good practice to keep it moist, which you know, it's also a great advice for something else. But moving on, I also dedicate a small piece of parchment paper whenever I work with it. And then it's very simple. I took my sculpting tools and spread that shit, like it's a peanut butter. Preferably, you wanna keep your milliput moist and use metal tools instead of the crappy silicone brush I used at the start. As I am laying down some of the minis, I gotta be extra careful. As you can see, I am still using some super glue to reinforce the positions and moving them again would be not great. So whenever I place a mini, I do multiple measurements beforehand to make sure that it fits in there nicely. And I guess now you realize why I can't just throw them all in there, but I have to do the back row first. Once I actually get to painting, it would be an absolute pain in a dick to get to some of them. So yeah, I still do measure all the positions, but the front row will have to wait until way later. I also finally got to place some of the rubble. Again, maybe I didn't have to use any super glue in this step, but just to be 100% sure, I used it anyway. At this moment I tested even more positions. I was very satisfied with this one, but I realized that there are two problems with this dude right here. One, he is not that interesting to stand at the center of this piece, and two, he still leaves too much empty space. So I tested multiple minis in his position, until eventually I settled for the original Sword Brother with Lightning Claws. This was my favorite miniature from the Black Templars range, so I was quite happy it fits in there so nicely. And after priming everything, I was ready for some painting action. I would describe painting this diorama the same way I would describe going to college. It's very fun at first, there are a bunch of things you can explore, but at some point it becomes a grind and you want it to be over. Before actually talking about what the f*** am I doing here, it's important to explain what am I aiming for when I said that I wanna make this into a grimdark diorama. There are two big inspirations for this project. The first one is Roman Lapat, who has been making dioramas in frames for a while now. And the second is John Blanche. I think that his artwork is the epitome of grimdark. Very bleak setting, disturbing shapes and the sepia color palette. I won't really change the shapes of the miniatures, but I am definitely using a very similar color palette. So in fact, the color choice for the minis and the background will do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to the vibe of this piece. And speaking of the background, you can see that I didn't attach it yet. Because of that, I can paint the minis using all angles. But not gonna lie, I still didn't paint the back of the minis. <gasps> I know, very shocking, but there are parts that simply won't be visible at all. And in the end, you'll know that even now I painted some parts that are impossible to see anyway. Now, as you're watching this, you could have already noticed several things. For example, it's true that I am very much within the John Blanche color palette, but there is one exception, which is black. If I was faithful to the OG Blanchitsu, I would simply leave the black parts flat, without highlighting them. In my case though, I am highlighting them, and for that I use a mix of lilac and 
well, black. The result is still muted enough to qualify as grimdark. I, I think. This is one notable exception, but the rest of the piece should totally be within the sepia, brown, orange and yellow range. Another thing worth noting is that I am using non-metallic metal. I actually was thinking about using true metallics, but this is supposed to be a framed painting, so non-metallic metal is the obvious choice. Painting metals without metallic paints is not too difficult, and only two things really matter. Knowing where to place the light colors, and having strong contrast between shadows and lights. This contrast will make it appear shiny and reflective, but the right placement is what truly sells the non-metallic metal effect. I even made some parts of certain minis less shiny by applying a wash over them. But you can still see that they appear metallic, because I placed the reflections correctly. I also wanted to mention that all the Black Templar symbols were painted freehand. It's not like I wanna flex or anything, well, maybe a little bit, but using decals would feel really out of place. Adding some freehands here and there and focusing on some interesting details definitely helps the entire piece because you have more eye candy for the viewer. But anyway, with the minis painted, it's time to attach them. I repeat the whole millipod cascade, but this time I am even more careful, because of the painted minis. This took a little while, but once all the minis were placed, I could see the end of the tunnel. Since Milliput for the most part doesn't have too much texture, using a texture paint is an easy solution to create a gritty, dirty environment. This is further reinforced by adding even more rubble and scrap all over the place. I just toss it in there as it's drying. Unsurprisingly, the terrain was painted within the same color palette, so muted, dirty looking colors. I also gave a bit more attention to the small debris pieces, so they stand out but not too much. When it came to the background, I had very little idea on what exactly to do with it. But when I fully realized I wanted to be orange, I committed something that would be considered a war crime, if you did that to a mini. I took the paint bottles and dumped the paint on it as if it was ketchup. And then I spread it until it was smooth. I know, very gross, but stay with me here. After adding some more color variety, I also sketched some simple shapes. And yeah, it doesn't look great, but it will be more than enough for the battlefield vibes. To make it more subtle, I adjusted the thing with my airbrush. And after some more repeated little touch-ups and gluing it all together, we are done. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and see you in the next one.